What's up, guys? Welcome to the December 2019 live stream. So hopefully y'all can hear me okay. Should be interesting. I'm trying this from um, the new YouTube interface, and it's always kind of hit or miss whenever I'm messing with this stuff. So hopefully you guys can hear me okay. The actual live show starts at about 2 p.m., so we've got a good eight minutes left to hang out, just a little bit. So real quick shout out to you guys, Bud's Lounge, Jack McGinty, Colin, Nick, Jessica J. What is up, you guys? Good, Colin says that he can hear me. Good, good. Oh. Good to hear. So in this live show, it's gonna be a mix of all kinds of different corals. Uh, there's a little bit less than 200 corals in this particular show, so it should be a little over two hours, I would say. So hopefully you guys packed a lunch, <laughs> so to speak. Okay, Murray M says the 1080p is coming through fine. Good. I used to do um, higher resolution live streams, but for some reason the last couple that I did, I got like some wonky results because I record everything in um, in 4K. So if I had the internet connection for it, I could do a 4K broadcast, seeing as I don't have the internet connection for it. Can't really do that so much. But I was able to do a 1440p stream, which is um, marginally nicer than 1080p. And the past couple times, uh, so I've been doing it for like months and months with no problem. But then suddenly I started having these issues, and I'm like, yeah, I better bring it back down to 1080 for a little while. So awesome, you guys. I'm really glad that, uh, that you're able to hear and see me just fine. If you missed my last video, that's a good one to catch up on for all, a lot of the developments here. We were finally, finally able to go and retrieve these tanks down from Florida big deal stuff because that was one of those milestones that I was really looking to get over the top of like for the longest time because it's been um, it's been quite a long time that we've been waiting for those tanks and they cost a pretty penny so that was also kind of just like hanging over my head as like you know one day I'm gonna have to like do my final payments on these things and kind of just getting all that out of the way was like a huge relief so lately, I, I guess that that's the, that's the word of the month, is relief. More than happiness, more than excitement, more than anything. It's this like sense that I feel like this 900 pound weight has just been lifted off my shoulders. Um, the only other time that I felt that was when I completely finished college. Um, normally people finish college in about four years. Uh, I was in college for 15, give or take. That's that's how many like degrees and stuff I did. And so when I passed the bar exam for law school, or after you graduate law school, you can take a bar exam. I passed the bar, and the feeling of relief that I felt that that was like the last like education, like official education thing that I was ever going to do in my whole life. That felt like a million pounds was lifted off my shoulders. So kind of similarly, this, this aquarium deal felt like that, where it's like finally done with that. So uh, as far as getting them all plumbed in and getting them started, that is totally secondary for me. Obviously, I'm excited to get that going, but if it doesn't happen immediately, not the worst thing in the world. I can, I can kind of hang out and wait. Now, what's ironic about that is I was really kind of eager to get going on the four aquariums that were already here. Because like we need to get going on this, you guys. And it was really hard to schedule people to work on it, yada, yada. You've probably heard me rant a million times about that. But since getting these new tanks in, all of a sudden, there's no shortage of people coming and working. So I'm like, whoa, okay, hold on. We don't, I mean... For, for you guys, it's great because like this stuff happens faster. For me, it's like I get to pay for it, so not in a huge hurry for any of that fun stuff, right? So I'm like, guys, 
we're good on this, right? But nope, they're, they're here like every day, every other day, chipping away at the, at the plumbing project. Occasionally, like the plumber will come over with a new cart full of, uh, full of plumbing parts. And I just look in there and I see all, all the valves and I'm thinking, that's going to suck to pay for. Because <laughs> if, uh, if you guys don't know, like schedule 80 uh, valves at any decent size over an inch and a half, uh, they're expensive. They're between like thirty to a hundred dollars a piece. If you, if you, if they're really large, they're like a couple hundred, three hundred dollars a piece. So I'm like, can I just kind of like enjoy my time just looking at these empty tanks? But hey, you know what? Come g give me like a couple months, and I'll be like itching to go again. I'm sure. Alrighty, alrighty. Let me get caught up on some of these uh, some of these comments. Uh, Eric Garza loves loves the content. Just want to say you've helped me a great deal. I appreciate it, Eric. I'm glad I'm glad that I was able to help. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Obviously, um, let's see, Mario, new to reefing. Like your videos, awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty in depth hobby. There's a you can certainly dive down that rabbit hole. There's there's a million things that you can learn. There's a million things that I still learn, even to this day. Uh, Mahai A, fan. When will we see Will's tank again? Uh, that's a good question. So I plan on hanging out with Will sometime, maybe a little bit after the holidays. I'll see if I can stop over and actually see his house. Um, from what I understand, his his tank is doing quite nicely. B ball vlogs. 4K is overrated. Most don't have the bandwidth to even view. So there's there is the bandwidth issue for watching 4K. But there's also the fact that a lot of people nowadays, I would say about half, they watch on their phones. So I, I, I joke with some of my tech YouTube friends that, that 1080p is the new 4K because people are transitioning away from uh, traditional like desktops and laptops in favor of mobile phones. So yeah, you're, you're right in the sense that 4K is kind of overrated. but. This camera that you're that you're seeing here is a 4K cinema camera, and it's pretty nice. So, if if people have that ability to watch stuff in 4K, I say go for it. Reef dudes, what's up, Devin? Happy Saturday. Uh, Wayne Scott, how's it going? Mermaids Reef, hello. Uh, ah, so Mari is asking, I want Coraline algae in my tank. It's three months old. What's the fastest way? Um, and Jack McGinty kind of like answered you for a little bit there. Mine took over eight months to start. You just have to keep waiting. And that's really it. Uh, if you provide Coraline algae with, uh, with the environment that they like, a lot of alkalinity, lower light, a lot of, a lot of people don't know this, but that coralline algae does not respond very well to bright light. In fact, bright light can pretty much kill it within an hour. So a lot of times people are overdoing the lighting aspect of it. But yeah, just give it a, a, a good, happy place for it to grow and it'll grow like crazy. Than, <laughs> you're a true scholar. Yeah. Uh, I might not be much else, but I'm definitely a true scholar. <laughs> Been doing it a little while. All right, guys, two o'clock. Let's get going on this. So when I when I make the switch over, uh, it might glitch for a little bit. I've seen weird stuff happen. Bear with me on this, okay? Here we go. Okay. So hopefully that went smoothly. Yeah, so it's probably back by now, but whenever I just do a, that, that scene change, this thing freaks right on out. So I'm like, I, I warned you guys, I warned you guys, so hopefully we're caught back up. So, am I still breaking up or is... So 
hopefully we we've caught up like i said DC reefers uh, here watching on the phone. Very good. Sarcat, not a 4K screen, but a 1440. Yeah, like I said, I used to do 1440. It used to be pretty good. Eric Ross, go Browns. Go drama. That's at least at least we got that. All right. Looks like we're all, we're back. Thank you guys for for letting me know. Yeah, 20 second delay is about average, I would say. Um, for, for this broadcasting software, it doesn't have a set delay, but usually it is about tw a 20 second delay. Good, good. All right, just checking the last bit of chat here. Okay, so Sarcat is asking, had uh, my first experience with a leather coral, just retracting its polyps for no reason for a few days. Now the colony is healthy and vibrant looking again. Is this, I read this is natural. Yeah, so leather corals and certain other corals that aren't necessarily uh, soft corals, they go through these phases, right? Where it's, it's kind of their mechanism to get algae off of their body. So occasionally they develop this like waxy film and they completely close in, have this waxy appearance. And as long as you provide them enough water flow to kind of dislodge that waxy film, it sheds off and then they can fully open and grow even better. So uh, leather corals, especially like the big toadstool, cercophytons and stuff like that, uh, they, they very regularly do that. The, the problem is when um, that waxy layer then gets like more algae to grow on it and sometimes um, it keeps that, that coral kind of suffocated. So uh, I kind of sometimes go through and uh, hit it with like a turkey baster just to give it even more flow to dislodge any of that just to, just to break up that, that layer every now and again. But yeah, totally natural. I've seen, uh, like I said, some stony corals even do that. It's, it's nothing to worry about. In fact, it, it's quite healthy. John Rose just got an apex after six years in the hobby. What uh, do you think are the best and worst parts of automation? Okay, so my f absolute favorite part of automation is monitoring. Um, I don't necessarily use a lot of automation for much more than, than monitoring, but I like being able to quickly on like a phone or whatever, quickly view um, a bunch of tank parameters. And now that we're getting into some devices that can test a lot of different parameters and, and log all that information. I think that's by far the most powerful aspect of automation. Generally, I don't think people test enough. Perfect example, me. I don't test enough. There has been months and months and months where we just didn't pay attention to certain parameters. When we finally do look at those parameters, they are in a word, suboptimal. Suboptimal is a word. Um, disastrously high, it could be another way to describe it. So uh, for example, uh, in five different systems, okay, thousand gallon systems, five different ones, our average phosphate is 2.5 parts per million right now. A little bit high. Uh, what else? The nitrate on average is 50. The high is about 65. Also not ideal. Now, the, the corals for the most part are doing pretty well. So in, in fairness to that, like sometimes these larger systems, the, the chemistry doesn't exactly line up to a 100 gallon home system. But then again, you probably don't want to have 65 parts per million of nitrate in your systems either. So it, going back to your question about automation. So paying attention to um, monitored parameters, excellent. The thing I don't necessarily like about automation is sometimes people use it as a crutch and they don't build in tons of redundancy for a lot of these actions to take place. For example, uh, like a lot of dosing, a lot of um, top off and stuff like that. It, it, it could get worrisome if um, 
if something were to fail at the sensor level or something gets stuck on or something gets stuck open during a power outage or whatever, some parameters get reset and uh, something just gets overdosed, whether it's just top off in, in the way of fresh water or in worst cases, it's kind of chemical that you're periodically dosing. So that's kind of what I don't love about, about automation is I think that sometimes um, when there are bugs, those bugs are uh, system ending catastrophes. So if you're going to be doing the automation route, make sure that like three things have to say, yes, there's something going on, let's do something about it. Not just one sensor's opinion on, hey, uh, the temperature is such and such. Uh, I think the temperature is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Clearly not right. So we need to get this back up to 78 and starts burning up your tank. Stuff like that. You, you know, sometimes it's better to have like three different temp temperature monitors. All three have to say temperature is low, that sort of thing. That's just an example. Okay. What is up, Ken Easter? Happy Saturday to you too. <laughs> Macy's daddy. My, my, my daddy needs some corals. <laughs> Wayne Scott, your copepod is photobombing you. Yeah, there's a few uh, there's a few photobomb critters in there. The worst is the fish. Like I had to go through it and manually like undo some stabilization because a fish swims past the coral, and so this like nice smooth um, slide that that I'm showing here, uh, it's not exactly that smooth coming out of the camera I, I apply some stabilization but if a fish swims in front of it it tries to stabilize with the fish too and so it goes like super crazy for a second monitoring trident awc so I'm, awc is automatic water change that's pretty cool yeah i haven't tried that myself my systems don't necessarily translate that well to doing an automatic water change for the simple fact that we do so much regular maintenance where we regularly top off with fresh and salt water. So we kind of have this automatic water change system. It's just flesh powered. <laughs> it's people. And you know, because there's a staff here, it's 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 a it's a very regular process. But for a home aquarium, yeah, I, I definitely think that auto water changes are cool. I hate testing, so I bought a reef bot. Uh, I've seen uh, Reef Dudes, uh, I saw his thing on ReefBot, and it seems pretty cool. Like, I, I haven't messed with it personally myself. It, well, I haven't really messed with a lot of these newer uh, generation auto-testing things, partly because I'm kind of broke currently, but the other thing is certain ones are having um, some supply issues. So I think that the one that I was really interested in was in Mindstream, and they're not taking orders right now. Like I, I went to their website, they're like, yeah, we have a backlog of, of orders we need to fill, so we're just not going to like take any more. So I'm like, that's fine, that's fine. They don't even have wholesale. Like that, that's what's crazy. Like, because I know um, I, he's not in chat currently, but uh, I know that one guy was just like, yeah, I wanted to order like a hundred of them for all my clients, and they just said absolutely not. There's no way we're even going to sell you a hundred at retail. So I'm like, okay. Uh, Trident is something that I'm curious about. Uh, that monitors like the, the the big three of the the stony coral trinity, being like calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. Uh, that would be a cool thing to, to monitor. Uh, Alcatronic is cool. That's alkalinity only. But yeah, I, I know some people that are very happy with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm game to try a number of these different, uh, different testing solutions. Okay, so Greg Reef Boy is asking, the corals you're showing today, are they under T5 lighting or LED? They are under T5. They look more colorful today, or are you dosing aminos by chance? Uh, yes, we are dosing aminos. Now, some of these corals may or may not have been in a tank that we're dosing amino acids in, uh, but it also could be season. So a lot of them that, if you saw like a few uh, shows during the summertime, they might be a little bit more muted just because of the seasonality. Now, once we get into like the fall and winter, a lot of these corals start to 
to really shine. Now, I would say that like the peak uh, coral appearance is, is right around February, at least here it is. But um, I think as time goes on and we're starting to do a lot more farming in this new building under uh, a lot more consistent lighting, um, I, I am curious to see how that compares because um, one of the, our guys here, Luke, he has stuff growing under T5s, but slightly differently than how we do it. And sometimes he'll bring back something that he has purchased from us and set it right next to what we're currently selling. And his looks completely dazzling in comparison to stuff, some of the stuff that we're, we're growing. So there's always room for improvement. Like, don't even get it twisted. Like, I don't think that there's any um, anybody out there that has like all the answers. So we will always continue to dabble. And a big part of, of our our coloration, um, maybe not being where I would like it, isn't even so much to do with seasonality, but maybe it's being suppressed by the fact that I have enormous levels of phosphate and nitrate. So if we were to cut that down even to just kind of high levels, uh, that might make a huge difference in how these corals look. Adam Moore says, running the Trident since February. Very cool. Cross-checked with ICP and was spot on. That's nice. Uh, let's see. Nick Walters was interested in that but heard they went out of business. Oh, okay. Adam Moore is saying, yeah, they, that they went out of business. So did, well, so did they go out of business or are they just suspending orders? Because, like, the website is still up. Um, Adam Moore is like, okay, 100% out of business. Okay, interesting. They ran out of money. That's a shame because it's like from everything that I've seen of the product, it seemed good. Uh, okay. Huh. Yeah, that that's a bummer because that was one of the ones I was more excited about seeing. Sorry, catching up with some of the other ones that I may have missed. Nope, out of business. Bummer. Well, it makes my shopping list that much more streamlined. Because I, uh, I have basically nine systems that, that's going to be running here. So if I can save nine grand, not the worst thing in the world, right? Uh, Timothy, Than, are you excited about the Indo band lift and why? So um, I haven't heard exactly what the details are, but some people are very optimistic about it being lifted um, relatively soon. Um, the, the funny thing is we started this, this entire building expansion before there was an Indo band. Right. So like we it wasn't any kind of like premonition of, oh, what's going to happen is there's going to be this ban and then I'm going to be in like prime, prime state to grow all these Indo corals and such and such. Right. That really wasn't that far ahead. Like I just wanted to grow corals. <laughs> and then it's funny that, that uh, since it's been about like two years now that the Indo ban might be lifting right when our building is like scaling into operation. So as far as like my planning and everything like that goes business wise, it really hasn't done anything. It'll be interesting to see just on their end how they're going to implement any, any changes because uh, they had all kinds of um, all kinds of concerns about a lot of like weird black markety type stuff, a lot of activity there, a lot of fraud as far as what is Maricultured or not, they have different classifications on on the type of export, and so uh, stuff that was supposed to be maricultured kind of wasn't, and it was going out as a maricultured coral. So I think that that was part of the reason why the government was kind of cracking down. And this new person that has taken office, I think, is more open to exploring opening up and. Um, It'll be interesting to see if what form that takes, whether it's going to be mariculture only, or if it's going to be some combination of the wild caught stuff and mariculture. I've heard kind of different things. I don't know if anybody really 
has the answer out there currently. But we'll see. Um, am I excited about it? It'd be nice to get some different corals other than Australian, certainly. Uh, but you know, being like more on the coral farming end of things, I was really only interested in, in some super nice high-end things to, to grow in this building. Like buying super high-end nice things for the greenhouse is always a bit of a risk because there's a lot more variables at work over there. And occasionally that could go poorly. Uh, like for example, I bought like a Walt Disney Acropora, 150 bucks, it died. Stuff like that, you know, that's, that's no fun. Here, it could still die, but I have a little bit more um, you know, control and so that at least that's a little a little safety blanket, I guess. Ten mil and ran out of money. Hey, it happens all the time. Absolutely. It's not lifted for export. Yeah, I figured. What what do you call sky high nitrates and phosphates? Um, well, my nitrates are at 50, 50 parts per million. The phosphates are at 2.5. Okay, I've got to take a quick break to the restroom. I'll be right back.
and I'm back. All right. Okay. So, okay, so Adam is asking about Diaceris. Been in the hobby for a long time, hardly ever see it for sale. Yeah, they're not that common, really. Like, um, there's a few different types that I've seen, but the kind of the, the cool thing about it is it's, it's a plate coral that you can propagate. I should have taken my phone with me so I could just at least chat with you guys because <laughs> it's like all the bathroom chatter. Which, by the way, the bathrooms here are slick. If you've ever been to Tidal Gardens before. Uh, DB Reefer, do you ship to the UK? I do not. Not yet anyways. Definitely number two. <laughs> Glad he's not on the wireless lav mic. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Adam, we're, don't scroll up. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a coffee break. John Rose, Captcha has me locked out of my account. Ooh. You know what? Let me. Um, Send an email, and I'm going to see if Ben is available, because sometimes he can send you a code directly. Okay, so if he's there, he might be able to help you out. Okay, so Matt is wondering, do most common ZOAs actually contain palytoxin? Uh, that I'm not sure. Um, a lot of like these ZOAs, a lot of them don't have palytoxin. Palytoxin is more associated with paleothoa. But there are definitely some zoas that do have palytoxin. It's kind of a kind of a hit or miss thing. If you're really worried about it, take appropriate precautions. Um, we're typically not that careful here. And what brand of skimmer do you use on the toilet? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Who should I? Who should I? What skimmer company should I give a free plug to? Uh, I'm gonna go with Rossmont. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna be doing some uh, a little a collaboration project with them in a few months, maybe. So. Uh, I'm going to be setting up like a non-photosynthetic tank, and they've they've got some some technology that might help with that. And I met the the owner when I visited the UK. He's an Italian guy named um, Mattia, or Mattia, and uh, he's a really interesting guy because uh, when I became Facebook friends with him, the first thing I see is like he's he looks exactly like the lead singer of Metallica. And he's on stage doing the whole Metallica thing. I guess like he's like the lead singer of a, of a Metallica tribute band. And I don't know if they sing all the songs in Italian or not. But it's like, to just see that visual, it's like, whoa, that is that is mind-blowing. So anyway, cool guy. Uh, makes a pretty good product from what I can tell. And so that's, that's, that's the skimmer, you guys. Okay, so Tattooed Dancer 91. 
Got my first mail order corals recently. Uh, most mostly browned out stressed Acropora. What is the recommended procedure for getting them going again? Um, if I were to get a thing of acros and they immediately started down coloring, part of that could just be the shipping stress, right? I mean, shipping is pretty much one of the most stressful things that, that coral can go through, especially in the winter time. Uh, Acropora tend to, um, they tend to be the most responsive to stress. So, you know, that could be, mm, that could cause it all right there. And you just need to like, just give it some time. Now, the other thing that I ha that I found that does help quite a bit is feeding and specifically feeding a lot of like amino acids. So I would go ahead and give that a try because a lot of the, um, the acros around here responded really well to that feeding. Okay, so John Rose, uh, CAPTCHA has me locked out of your account. So um, I don't know if that's the name of the account, but Ben said he doesn't have any customers under John Rose. He does not seem to have an account. Um, go ahead and send uh, support at titlegardens.com an email, and we'll go from there perhaps. Okay, so Fan, what are the most rapidly growing SPS corals? For us, uh, the, the fastest are probably some mix of plating Montipora, bird's nest, and certain types of Acropora are very fast growing. Keelan. Hey, Than. I'm coming for a visit to the farm Tuesday morning. Very excited. Awesome. Should be a good visit. Timothy. Than, I've heard CITES does not apply to soft corals and NEMS detached from live rock. Do you know if this is true? Canada's market is pretty limited. Okay. Not an import-export guy. Okay. But I can tell you that the CITES stuff is specifically scleractinia, which is stony corals. Now, just because something falls out of CITES doesn't mean everything is fine. Because um, I, I wish Laura from Ecomarines could... Fl One of these days I should just like do a podcast with her and, and just do the whole thing and go over all the details because she does a lot of import export. So from what I understand, there's like about five different things that are required. And CITES is just one of the five. So you still need health certificates. You still need import-export permits. There's like a lot of these other things that have to line up. And just because something is not CITES doesn't mean, oh, we can just willy-nilly trade in this. It doesn't quite work out that way. And it's a really good way to get stuff confiscated and get severe fines levied. So um, we don't do anything really involving uh, import-export yet. It's something that we might explore down the road. But um, yeah, it's it's certainly not my strong suit. But from what I understand, uh, yeah, there, there's quite a quite a, a few things involved in it besides just CITES. Maria Stark, hey Coral Emperor. <laughs> By the way, I'm super excited about the Dune movie coming out next year. I'm gonna throw that out there. Uh, happy to see you in a more relaxed mood after many months of uh, putting together what might be the coolest coral propagation facility in the U.S. Oh, thank you very much. So what's funny, like people sometimes ask, like, why did you try to make this place so nice? It's not even open to the public. And it's like, that's true. But you know who it's open to? Me. <laughs> it's like, I have to be here to do this work. My employees have to be here to do this work. And it's it's kind of funny because um, so I'll, I'll talk to like especially uh, some other store owners, and they're like, "Yeah, it's like I don't know why you decided to make this so nice. Like you have no retail presence, which is one hundred percent true. By the way, they're not like they're not throwing they're not throwing shade. It's just true. So then I said, well, it's partly like also like a recruitment tool. You know, like I want to attract good talent. 
it helps to get that good talent and keep them around if they're working in a nice environment. And then so this one guy was like, I do have a lot of turnover. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, exactly, exactly, right? So these things pay dividends. It's, it costs a lot of money to train staff and then just to lose them to somebody else. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm definitely going a little hard on the on, on how nice this place is. Stuff that does not show up in ROI calculation, but I, I once spent um, an entire year, I think training six different people that year, and none of the six stuck around afterwards. So that was hundreds of hours probably just kind of wasted. Martin Jensen, hello from Denmark, welcome. Uh, let's see, if you ship, you need a permit, but you can bring it across yourself. Okay, I'm, I'm guessing you're still talking about Canada. You need a fish and game permit or something along those lines to ship or import, yeah. <laughs> so the, the biggest thing that's, that's stopped, because this will give you an idea of, of like, the sort of boundaries that I have. So for me to officially export, first of all, I would need that export permit. Not a big deal. That costs like $100 a year, right? That's like the least of my problems. The biggest problem is that I would have to get my packages um, certified and inspected at a field, like a, a fish and wildlife field office. The closest ones to me, there's two of them that are close to me, and they are both about six hours away. One is in New York City, and the other one is in Chicago. Most of the people in this area, when they do import-export, they go to Chicago. So that is a six-hour drive each way. It's a 12-hour day right there. Um, Obviously, I'm not going to be shipping it there because that would add a 24-hour delay. Plus, I would need a, an, a, an agent over there already to possibly repackage everything that I just package. Um, yeah, that right there means that these orders have to be gigantic, like well into five figures for that to be even a consideration. So, but there might be um, a. a a wholesaler or a store conglomerate that might want to do that overseas but still it's like I don't even think I have a vehicle big enough like I would need to like get that Tesla Cybertruck and a and a, and a trailer to haul all my stuff over there yeah it's it's not likely right now but that's that's currently the the biggest obstacle besides the paperwork is just the logistics it's I wish like I could have UPS or FedEx just pick up at my location and we're good, but that's not the case. Reef dudes, who would ever want to leave the Tyler Gardens Coral Palace? I don't know. Maybe it's a hostile work environment, like I always joke about. But what's cool is that um, coming up in January, I'm going to be getting um, some new people. So Luke is going to be going from, from part-time to full-time. And then I'm going to get an intern to help me do some media stuff. For example, shooting all these corals for the live show. Um, it's definitely a process to put this live show together. No joke. Like every single one of these, it takes me one minute per coral to shoot. So if you do the math on that, let's say there's 200 corals, that's 200 minutes of just shooting it. That's assuming that there, there aren't reshoots that need to happen because sometimes it gets kind of monotonous and you'll accidentally skip one and you have to then go all the, way, all the way back and shoot that one again, change all the numbering. It's, it's fun. But then comes the, the processing, all these overlays, like where it just says up here, um, like pink pasta lapora, you know, that has to be 
you know, edited every single time. The regular price has to be edited. The percentage off has to be edited. Like putting all these things up, stabilizing the thing, doing the color change, going from like a daylight coloration to the actinic for every single coral 200 times. There's stuff you can do in batch, but not the text. The text is, is going to be unique. So get on it, intern. <laughs> Luckily, I don't think that she watches my live shows, but um, yeah, she's going to get real familiar with them, that's for sure. Uh, Daniel Waleska, hello from Germany, only tank breeding corals. One of these, so I've never been to Germany before, but I would like to go visit there because I heard there's a really cool place there called White Corals, which I guess is like, um, it's uh, owned by the, the company that makes Nios products. And from what I understand, it's a very, very nice outfit. Okay, so Tattoo Dancer 91. Uh, Tidal Gardens, are you going to go bare bottom in the new display tanks? Uh, funny you mention that. I was about to say, if they were my tanks, they are my tanks, right? <laughs> uh, but we're taking a little bit more of a democratic approach on this. Uh, the prevailing sentiment amongst the people that will spend a lot of time trying to maintain these tanks is that a bare bottom is much easier to maintain than a substrate. So although I would probably go in the direction of a substrate, um, I think that they would revolt. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to be going bare bottom, at least initially. We can always add stuff in later if it if I really hate it. But I, I was I was thinking about doing the SPS tank with um, with a bare bottom just because there's like there's four closed loops, there's an abyss return pump, there's a lot of flow, it might be kicking up a sandstorm. But in the uh, peninsula tank that's supposed to be a mixed reef, well, there's a lot less flow. There's only two uh, closed loops and uh, and obviously the return. Excuse me. So for that, uh, yeah, it's like I, I think that we could totally have pulled off a substrate in there, but I think that they're hedging towards no substrate whatsoever at all in this new building. So we'll see. We'll see how long that lasts. Uh, Than you need a text edit lackey. <laughs> Scrap that intern. Yeah, so there. Uh, so this this girl on paper is looking like she could do a dozen really good things, like as far as like editing, shooting, photography, like all kinds of stuff, um, uh, design. So yeah, it's like on paper it's like looking really good, and it just turns out that one of my friends. Uh, from high school slash college. He is a filmmaker in the area and he's also like an adjunct professor at the university and she is in his class. And so when I asked um, when I asked my friend about about this intern, he was like saying she is wonderful. She works she's like a really hard worker. There's some people in class that haven't done anything all semester, but you're you should feel very lucky that you're getting her as an intern. So I'm like awesome. That's what I wanted to hear. Uh, 420 reefer. I just went bare bottom. My corals and nutrients are way better now. That's something that um, that is part of um, the concern with a substrate. Because in our systems at the greenhouse, we do have substrate in some of the systems, most of the systems, and to, to some degree there is a substrate going on. And in some cases, that substrate has been in place now undisturbed for about 12 years. So it's entirely possible that all of our nutrient issues are tied to these, um, just these nutrient bombs, you know? It's hard, hard for us to tell. We just started testing some of this stuff. Nick Walter says sand definitely looks more appealing. Not arguing with you there. Um, I think it looks a lot nicer. 
Yeah, and Reef Dudes is saying the same thing. It looks a lot more natural. I agree. Dominic Frost, I like to have sand, but there's definitely some issues with it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm on item number 71. I think that, that this is one of those ones where like the stabilization got like wonky a little bit because of that fish. Uh, Lucy Janice, are you sending coral to Europe? No, not currently. Uh, maybe sometime in the future, but there's a lot of a lot of friction, a lot of obstacles. Uh, let's see, I'm having too low nutrients without sand. Even turn my skimmer off to get the readings on my tests. Might add sand just to get a constant nutrient source. So if given the choice between no nutrient, like zero phosphate, zero nitrate, and having uh, levels that are too high. So what I would consider too high would be like 35 nitrate, maybe like half a part per million phosphate is probably like too high, right? I would much rather have like the elevated nitrate and phosphate versus something borderline zero. Like I'm really not messing with that ultra low nutrient stuff. So I think that if um, we do the zero substrate systems in, in, in what we've got going on downstairs with like a lot of these, um, like the like we're playing with those bio bricks from a couple of different uh, manufacturers, Brightwell and I forget the other one guys. I think it starts with an M. I forget. Basically it's that, it's that ceramic biomedia stuff. So I am I, I've heard that if you overdo that stuff, you can really crash your your nutrient levels. So we'll see. At least we're gonna be paying more attention to it. JB Aquatics bare bottom for business, substrate for the hobby. Yeah, I could see that. Max spec? No, it's not a max spec. It's um, it's a company that I honestly never really heard of before. It was like Marine Pure. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know if they make anything else other than that, but it's a Marine Pure block. Yeah, and I know max spec makes it. I think that uh, does Vertex also make it? But yeah, I, I um, I, I'm curious to try a, a lot of that because. Well, obviously next door, where we have all that elevated nutrient, perhaps we just don't have enough, not perhaps, I know we don't have a, enough live rock to do all that processing. Uh, Nick is asking, do corals grow close to and on sand in nature? It seems that from the footage I've seen, most of the corals are on rocks much higher off the sand. So is sand actually more natural looking? Um, yes and no. So yeah, there are definitely some corals that do approach the, the sand area. Uh, but I just I just think that like when I look at a, a tank that doesn't, it, that's like, the, like a bare bottom, um, it kind of has this like sterile artificial look because the ocean definitely does not have an ABS bottom, right? Or a, or a clean glass bottom. Uh, so in that sense, I think it does look a lot more natural. And also, the um, I, I think it contributes a lot to like the biodiversity in the tank. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in that sand bed that I kind of find appealing. Now, I, I find like a clean looking sand bed appealing. There's some really ratty looking sand beds out there. I probably have a few myself. I just don't look at it that often. But like a really nicely manicured sand bed, I think looks really slick. Are zoas, which are one polyp harder to grow than the ones with multiple polyps? Um, no, not necessarily. I think that the issue that I run into with, um, with zoas that are a single polyp is that there's fish and things like that that can kind of disturb an, like a single polyp, right? So stuff that would never really even mess with uh, corals 
tends to start if it's like a single polyp. So for example, um, we've got we've got fox faces. They don't really eat zoas. And there's plenty of zoas in that tank. But if we put like a fresh, newly glued single polyp in there, it's just going to get chomped. So we typically don't like to even sell single polyp stuff because it usually just turns out bad. And we've had tangs that don't bother anything, bother single polyps of stuff. So there's that. Um, let's see. Gabriel is saying, I've got marine pure ceramic, ceramic balls, and every other day I see them release bubbles of nitrate. So they do work pretty well. I think that's the idea, right? So the, um, especially with larger pieces of that biological media, the inside is supposed to replicate the core of live rock, and the anaerobic process is trying to like the anaerobic bacteria the the low oxygen state is converting nitrate into nitrogen gas so if you're seeing um, some nitrogen gas essentially gassing off from from those things that could be good now the other thing is if you just have some stuff uh, illuminated that could just be oxygen from from algae buildup and sometimes we see that so it's kind of difficult to say whether the, the the bubbles that you're seeing are from like the photosynthesis of algae or whether it is the um, I was about to say ahermatypic but I don't know if that's the right word but low oxygen anaerobic bacteria cycle happening on the inside of these things Uh, GMAC, fan, any thoughts on macroalgae tanks? So I like them in theory. Uh, I, I like the way a lot of different uh, decorative macroalgaes look. Now, my problem, I guess, with, uh, with like refugium type systems in general is that it, it kind of prevents you from keeping certain kinds of fish, uh, specifically like herbivores. So what tends to happen, at least in, in some of our refugium type systems, is that we'll get some kind of like problematic nuisance algae with no really good way to control it. Uh, I suppose like some certain snails and stuff like that could work, but some of them are macro algaes that we don't really want, like Felonia, for example. And so it would be nice to put like a fox face in there to control Felonia, but you can't because they'll eat all the macro algae. Uh, sometimes then, the, the tank that we would have um, like, an, like an algae, decorative algae tank in is kind of too small for certain fish. So we were not able to put in the entire suite of maintenance fish that we would normally like. And so what'll happen is you'll get some weird pest, not even weird, just annoying, right? Like those rust colored flatworms or something that in the main systems are are not there at all because the, the fish and whatever fauna wipe all that stuff out. But you have this other thing connected to your system where stuff just is growing unchecked. And so we'll always have like this like baseline layer of like some, some annoying pest that we just simply can't get rid of because it's not being handled by our fish selection. So in that sense, I don't love it, but if you're, um, but then again, you know, this is kind of like a, a commercial setup. If you're talking about like a, a smaller hobbyist system where you can kind of like dote on it a lot more and, um, and just not neglect it ever, they could be really cool. And I think that we, we don't see enough of that type of system. Because one of my big complaints of, um, one of my big complaints of, the aesthetics in this hobby is that a lot of tanks tend to look kind of the same. There's a lot, and even when they people get creative with aquascapes, it's kind of cool, but uh, there's a lot of similarities tank after tank after tank. Whereas when you compare it to a lot, a lot of freshwater aquascapes, there's a lot more um, artistic diversity that's going on. And I'm wondering if um, like a macroalgae style tank kind of unlocks some of that creativity. 
Ernie Wallace, greetings, Than. Today's a good day. Just picked up my 100, 100 gallon Planet Aquarium's crystalline tank and stand. Awesome. Yeah, I, I know all about the, the excitement of getting new tanks, so that's great. <laughs> Harkins, what is up? Tech your talk, what is up? Got some blue blue wrenches in here. And I think I saw Diacanthus earlier, right? So hopefully he's still here. Oh, let's see. Uh, Nick Walters, Than, any advice on getting Lobophora algae out of tanks? Uh, the only, there's two things that we've ever done to get rid of that. So the first thing is to peel it off because Lobophora does peel off kind of nicely. The other thing is to take the entire rock out and just kill it. So there's no, uh, there's no like, fish or invert that I know that really takes out Lobophora. The best macroalgae dominant tank that I've seen here on YouTube is a macroalgae lagoon tank by Everyday Aquarius. Look it up. He has videos on it over the years. That's cool. Harkin says, sorry, I saw you had problems earlier. I don't think so. I went to the bathroom, that's about it. <laughs> How about setting up an Aptasia tank with one copper band? Uh, that would be an empty tank in about two days. Like the number of Aptasia that, that a copper band can take care of is pretty stunning. Like. We, we have Aptasia in, in some of our like isolated aquariums, but any tank that has, um, that has a copper band in it, there's no Aptasia, there's no feather dusters, no nothing. Like they have, they have got an incredible appetite, certainly. Okay, so I just got this text. Looks like John Rose has been taken care of. Either uh, John Rose figured it out or Ben took care of it, either way. Hopefully it's all good. <clears throat> so yeah, going about um, talking about like creativity and aquascapes and coral selection, I've kind of seen that uh, one one thing that I've noticed is that in freshwater, it seems like people have uh, have the ability to have a lot of individual smaller tanks, whereas typically people in the reef aquarium hobby they have fewer number of tanks or one tank. And oftentimes that means that in that one tank, they're going to put everything that they like. And I think that kind of creates a, a very like um, homogeneous appearance to a lot of a lot of tanks because people tend to like relatively similar things. And it's like, what is the most popular reef tank style out there? It's going to be a mixed reef. There's going to be some SPS. There's going to be some LPS. Maybe some Zoas here it's gonna start to look like one another after a while. Whereas I think that in the freshwater side of things, you're gonna get some people that are gonna, gonna hard commit on one type of, of livestock selection. It'll be like one kind of fish, just as like some, again, a creative artistic choice. And they'll have very specific uh, like leafy uh, I was about to say algae, but plants, uh, and you, you'll, it'll be, I guess, like a lot more monoculture esque. Like you don't typically see a tank in the saltwater aquarium world where it's like a single giant toadstool and a carpet of maybe one or two different types of mushrooms. It's kind of rare that you would see like uh, a tank hard commit to some kind of design philosophy like that. Instead, it'll be more like these are my. 50 favorite corals all in my tank uh, Oh, you had to hide someone is what I meant. Yeah, so you know what? I, I it's, it's been pretty good. Like I, I typically haven't well Depends on how you How you define good 
I actually enjoy banning people. So in, in that sense, I've been kind of like out of practice. Like back in the day, guys, you have no idea. There used to be like an average of five people getting perma banned on, on this live chat. Like every single live stream, like five, like five people on average. I even had like, um, you know, like friends coming come over and like one of my friends, my, my, one of my vacation friends, Suzanne, like she was, uh, she was doing like chat moderation that day. And I think she, she personally banned like five dudes, like boom, right, right off. And PSA, if you get banned on this channel, you will stay banned forever. There are no joke, like companies that are banned on this channel. It's hilarious because like I was uh, over in the UK, right? And there's like a major um, retailer. I'm not going to name them my name, but it's a major retailer there. And I'm, I'm visiting Eco Marines, and I'm like, and we saw like their booth. I was like, hey, those clowns somehow managed to get banned on my channel. And I don't remember what they did. This was years ago, but they're totally banned. And she was like, that can't be them because they, they got like they got like eight accounts. I'm like. Funny you mention that. And I, there's like a bunch of them that we've banned. So like they went hard on like a whole bunch of accounts. We banned all of them. <laughs> so that's like, so imagine like Bulk Reef Supply in my chat talking stuff, right? And I, and I banned Bulk Reef and I banned all their Bulk Reef people. That's kind of what it was like over in the UK. So anyway, that's my little aside. If you want to hang out, cool. If you want to, if, if you do something to get banned, Goodbye forever. That's just gonna throw that out there. That's how that. That's how this works. And trust me, I enjoy banning people way more than they enjoy trolling me. So it's part of the culture. There's no timeouts or anything like that. Like all these people with blue wrenches, I think that they've heard the story before. But you don't have to give anybody timeouts. If you see something pop off, ban them forever. Okay. Ellery Wong is asking, yeah, let's talk about reef aquarium stuff for a change, huh? Uh, copper mints are harder these days with better onboard processes. So I don't know about that. Like, I know that, from what I understand, like, the, the whole fish import side of things is really rough. Like, really rough. Uh, talking to eco-marines, like, she's got, like, all kinds of stories. And there's, like, an entire species that she just avoids altogether. Like, she doesn't want to deal with anything related to, um, like, leopard grasses. And I love leopard grasses, but... She's like, no, you don't want leopardasses. Like the way that those fish are treated, it's like disgusting. Uh, Dale J, what's your opinion on chato and fish? I have tons of it and was feeding it to my tangs with it, but a lot of people said don't feed your tangs with it. So I have not heard that. They say they don't digest it. Hmm. No, I, I really haven't heard of that. We, we've, we've fed it before to fish and we didn't have any issues. <laughs> yeah, Manier McNamee. Then there's Nathan Snake. Yeah, going back to the jam it all in there. Yeah. His is a whole bunch of stuff in the tank reef. <clears throat> Harkins Aquatics, lol, I smashed many trolls on this channel. So, so tech your talk, um, one strike policy. So I, I, was, I was around for when his channel started. And I remember like, you know, because when you start off, you have a low volume of chatter going on. And he, he does like technology reviews, camera reviews, and some for whatever reason, people go overboard when it comes to cameras. Like, they are on Team Sony, they are on Team Panasonic, they are on Team Canon. And it's like, it's like Ohio State, Michigan, every week if somebody like posts something nice about the other camera companies out there. And they would be like, the first like thing that they would say in a comment is, F you, you Canon, blah, 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 right? Tech Your Talk would spend nine comments going back and forth with this person politely killing them with kindness and at the end of it that person would be like you know i'm sorry i don't know why i, I flew off the handle like that you've got a great channel I'm, i'll be a subscriber forever and he would just keep doing this like you know just killing people with kindness you know like super and i'm like listen dude 
this is not sustainable. You need to ban people and move the F on with your life. And <laughs> I think it's fair to say that he's, he's, he's on board now. Because, no, 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 no. You, you, can't, you can't make everybody happy. So, anyway. Yeah, I, I, t I talked him out of being a good person. You're welcome. You're welcome. DJ Dorad, man, I'm a coral farmer from the UK and I'm glad you have not banned me. <laughs> I don't even know what they did. Like, to be perfectly honest, I don't know what them and their whole squad did. But all of them got banned. Those crazy UK guys. Sammy J, you're the one reason I started the saltwater tank. I'm from India. Awesome, awesome. Uh, how do you get the lights to change Kelvin so smoothly in all the coral shots? <sighs> it's a special effect. Now, uh, I could do it as a practical effect once we switch over to LED and, and actually shoot under LED. It's just not worth it. Like, it'd be tough to do as a practical effect for every single coral. I think it just it'd drive everybody nuts to see the coral, the, the colors constantly change every single minute like that. So no, I, it's, a, it's software. So it's an approximation of what it should look like. Uh, it's, it's not perfect, but you get an idea. Uh, Tattoo Dancer, when do we get an update on Will's tank? Will's got CEO problems. Like I, I haven't seen Will very often, so, but I, I will be seeing him hopefully in the next few weeks. Hopefully I'll, I'll get a chance to hang out with him and, and shoot some video of his tanks. Like I said, uh, from what I understand, his tank is doing very nicely. I remember the sea apple from someone's tank. That's Will's tank. Yep, he used to have that. <laughs> Manye McNamee, if I ever get banned, I'm just going to shut my tank down. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, Steve Cunningham, how do I purchase the coral? So, assuming that you're in the United States, you can go to titlegardens.com and you'll see a live sale link there. You'll see this video uh, embedded in there as well as the numbered list of corals. So for example, we're on item number 109. You just take item number 109. It's just like a white square that says 109 on it. We're not that fancy. Put it into your shopping cart and check out like normal. Yep, Harkins Aquatics gotcha. So that's another thing. It's like, would it be... Mm, I would love to be able to take a screen grab of these corals and use them as the item image. That would literally add a full day of effort to do. Probably not worth it. I'm wondering if that's something that an intern could do, but she probably has a lot better stuff to do. So it's probably not having. So unfortunately, Item number 111, orange pavona. It's kind of how that's got to be for a little while. And that's why these things are at a slight discount, is because we don't have to take that effort to do that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Scott Morrison. Scottish people are 100% better than English. Not all UK people are Muppets. <laughs> here's, here's what's funny, okay? When I went, when I went, when I was visiting the UK, I thought everybody was like super polite and super cool, right? And then I would turn away, and then somebody would tell me a story about those people that I just met, about how they're like the worst people on earth. And I'm like, wow, didn't exactly expect that. Then meet somebody else, and I'm like, cool, this guy's very nice too. And then again, I would hear some other things like, oh, this person was awful to me when such and such and such happened. I'm like, wow, that's not very nice at all. <laughs> So uh, yeah, it's, it's kind, of, kind of having that, that that separation, that that tourist thing. Yeah. Uh, so Dale J, uh, going back up the the comment ladder. So I'm in the state just below you. Do you let people come to visit your new building? Yes, by appointment. Love to come visit and show me your business. Sure, yeah. Just uh, get in contact with us whenever you feel like you uh, want to get in the area. We'll set up a time. Let's see. Uh, 
Okay, John Rhodes said, I paid for shipping on my first order. Once I buy 250 in Coral, will you guys remove the shipping or refund it later? We will refund it after the fact. Yep. Yeah, some people, um, so the way that shipping works is it's free after $250. Um, sometimes people purchase multiple instances of shipping. We refund it all. So no worries there. You're taken care of. Uh, Dominic, hey Than, is a mushroom a goner if the foot has literally become a hole and has its guts out? Certainly not ideal. Is it necessarily doomed to die? Not necessarily. It's not looking good, obviously. Um, depends on also what caused all that damage, because oftentimes what caused that level of damage to begin with is going to keep causing that damage, and that's that's kind of what the issue is going to be long term. Um, but a lot of mushrooms replicate by what's called pedal laceration, P-E-D-A-L, as in foot. They will scoot along and leave behind pieces of their foot, right? And so, like, foot damage isn't the end of the world when it comes to mushrooms. Not great that it's spewing out its guts, but it's happened before too. JB Aquatics can be brutal here in the UK, but you just have to let it go over your head. Um, yeah, I, I saw some weird different cultural differences uh, when I was over there in the UK. Like I saw that some people wouldn't sell certain coral to other people. Like, for example, uh, let's just say that this Carnival Favia was, like, the best thing ever. And everybody wanted to propagate it, right, to get to bring it in and, cop and propagate it. That would be like uh, me being unwilling to sell it to cherry corals or something like that. Or I wouldn't sell it to worldwide corals because I'm going to, like, somehow protect the fact that I'm the person that's growing this this favia currently that's like that's not how that works at all guy it's it's gonna get into the hands of all these people if they want to buy it from you at retail sell it to them. whatever so that was one cultural difference that i noticed another cultural difference that i noticed was uh, when we were at a trade show uh people were really antsy about um filming trade show displays like here in the united states it's like if I roll up on, on your trade show booth, or Coralfish 12G rolls up on your trade show booth, or if um, like like Devin or you know a, any of these like YouTubers, right? Inappropriate Reefer, who, who, whoever your favorite is, uh, if they roll up on your on, on your booth, you just hit the. This is why you went to the trade show, guys, <laughs> is to get seen. Okay, you just are about to get seen. But it's, it wasn't like that in the UK. There was like a, several booths that were like, no filming here, please. What, what, why are we, what are we doing here? We're, we're not like at some private function thing. You're literally here to promote your company and promote your product. What are we doing here? But no, it was definitely a lot more. Um, let, let me ask my supervisor to see if like you can film here, sort of thing. Very curious. Whereas like uh, in in the U.S., I've had like companies find me when I'm like about to eat lunch and drag me over to their booth, hoping that I was going to shoot their stuff. Crazy. Tech your talk. I was sitting here thinking the image quality isn't very good. Then notice YouTube picked the auto 480. Yeah. This is this is the technology expert here. <laughs> yeah, it, exactly. He, he's got he's got a fiber connection and, and YouTube is like, nope, you get 480. Uh Greg Reefboy, do you sell colonies as well? Uh yeah, it'll be more on the um It'll be more like as a regular website item rather than on the live show uh, for the simple fact that they take up more space typically and we, we've we noticed that more people are interested in frag type stuff for this particular live show. Like occasionally in the past we would have like 
uh, like scolies and stuff like that. And I can count on zero fingers how many times we would sell some of like the, the, the bigger budget colony type pieces. But on the website, they get gobbled up like Halloween candy. So time and place for everything, I guess. Okay, Stu Ool. So I live in Canada and want your corals. Yeah, a lot of a lot, a lot of Canadians are interested. Um, so unfortunately, we're not very well equipped to do the import export thing, and I don't know enough about it to really give you good advice on that. But generally speaking, if people want to buy our corals and take them to Canada, we don't mess with that at all. <laughs> especially if it's a stony coral stuff that you would need CITES and, and import export permits for. I'm not your guy, unfortunately. Guided by echoes, calc got dropped into my tank and burned it off half my mushroom, but it still grew back. Yeah, it says Dominic yeast. I mean, you might have, um, you might have some cause for optimism, but it's certainly a little rough. Yeah. What number are we on? Let's see, 125. You know, time has been flying. It's probably because I spent half of it in the bathroom. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna be going to, I think, 190 something perhaps? A little less than 200 corals. So yeah, we've got, a, got at least another hour here. That's good. So, so stool, uh, there, there might be a future where we do some import-export, but currently we're kind of preoccupied with uh, getting this building up and running. And I would love to like bring in somebody that knows like how to do good import-export and just say, you are the international division, go crazy. Okay. <clears throat> Tattoo dancers opening up a can of worms. Off topic, how great is the Mandalorian show? I bet Dan is a fan. Uh, am I a fan of the Mandalorian show? I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Oh, and here, here we here we go. Like all my sales are gonna drop to zero after I like, <laughs> say something bad about Star Wars. But I'm kind of not the biggest fan of like this new generation of Star Wars. Um, but I will give the Mandalorian uh, show some credit to to, to to the stuff that I think that I like about it. I think it's a, a pretty polished show. It's a little campy, which is you know it's 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 a design choice right they didn't they they definitely decided not to go like extra gritty with it or anything like that which is which is fine you know it's a, it's a disney show um what i kind of struggle with is that there doesn't seem to be a main central narrative that gets injected into every episode so for the first few episodes i definitely felt that but for, for the last 3 i really didn't so it felt kind of like uh like the, it was like a slice of life narrative. And I think that works a little bit better in certain stories. Um, it kind of works in Mandalorian. And I, I do, I just think that it's been done better in other things. Like for example, I think that if the Mandalorian was Star Wars Cowboy Bebop, I think it'd be like phenomenal, right? But Cowboy Bebop, kind of has that that um, I mean it, it's a lot better <laughs> just, it's just better but it, it had a lot more greediness to it and it had a lot more character development in it but they they really did that that episodic thing really nicely whereas in the last couple of oh well, last three specifically of the Mandalorian I didn't think anything was really going on but uh it's pretty good. I mean, there's, there's way worse shows than The Mandalorian. I mean, who am I kidding? There's a lot worse. Now, the, the show that I am all over is Watchmen on HBO. That's what's up. 
And yes, Baby Yoda is very cute. Uh, the practical effects are good. I agree with that. Uh, it got my wife into the entire series after never watching Star Wars. It's way better than, than the latest uh, batch of movies. Like, I, I'm, I'm kind of not all that thrilled with the, the, the current trilogy. But, no, it's definitely better than that. Uh, Nick, do you ever trade with locals? Uh, yeah, we do. So, um, yeah, de obviously, depending on what you have, it looks like you have uh, a war paint homophilia. Sure, we could do trades for that. Uh, what the heck is Cowboy Bebop? No, Gabriel. Okay, what I would give to rediscover something as good as Cowboy Bebop. So Cowboy Bebop is uh, a 90s era anime series. It is, for me anyways, it's, it's in the top three anime series ever created. It's so good. It's so good. Marcus really is 187. What is up? YouTube notification reminders is fired. Oh no. Yeah, Gabriel. So if you're into anime at all, at all, you have to check out Cowboy Bebop. It's sensational. Jeremy Phillips. I said the same thing on Cowboy Bebop. Totally agree. Yeah, dude, if Mandalorian just was a straight live action ripoff of Cowboy Bebop, fan for life. It, it, it plays itself into that type of, of thing, right? I mean, it, it could so easily be just that. Just, just, just be that. <laughs> Love off topic fan, yeah. Greg Reapway with a $5 super chat. How many gallons is in the new building? So the gallon rating is kind of hard for me to figure out because do we look at the outside dimensions of every tank? Because that's how everybody typically measures it, right? It's like, oh, it's length times width times height divided by 231 gives you your gallons. But that's generally for, for you know, regular size tanks. But when you start like... Um, having giant tanks where the glass thickness is an inch or is three quarters of an inch thick and you also have like interior stuff going on uh, over the footprint of or just not even footprint just the volume that you're talking about of space you can by by just having that that thickness of glass and the thickness of the Eurobrace and all that fun stuff factored in that's a difference of 200 gallons. So, multiple tanks, multiple instances of 200 gallons here or there. You might be off in your calculation by a thousand gallons. So, I would guesstimate that each system in this building is in the ballpark of 2,000 gallons, give or take 500 gallons. Yeah. So, yeah, in that, in that general ballpark, I would say. There's going to be maybe four systems in total. I haven't really designed the last two, so they may be smaller, they may be larger. Kind of depends on what we want to get into there. Um, so if you look at that, we're looking at between eight to 10,000 gallons maybe, or less. It, it'll be enough for, for us to, to keep us busy. I'm still looking forward to Rise of Skywalker. Uh... I've heard some spoilers, and if those spoilers are true, eh, we'll see. Um, but you know what? I, I'm not here to hit on any, anybody else's fun. I know a lot of people that are really enjoying uh, their Star Wars movies. Uh, it's not necessarily my thing. I think that I'm going to really enjoy the the new Dune 2020 movie that's going to be coming out. I like the cast. It's probably my favorite director all time working right now. So. Really, really excited about that. So, what other movies that I see recently that I really liked? Um, I saw, I saw The Irishman, Martin Scorsese. That was pretty good. I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood um, from Quentin Tarantino. That was pretty slick. Enjoyed that. And I saw um, the sequel to The Shining, uh, Doctor Sleep, and that that was pretty cool too. Um, but then again, it's like I love. Uh, What's that actress's name? Jessica, F Rebecca Ferguson. 
Yeah. Because like the, the the antagonist in Doctor Sleep is is a uh, Rose the Hat, and she's described in the book as like the most beautiful girl in the world, and it's like Rebecca Ferguson, good casting. I could see it. Uh, is it on Netflix? If we're talking about Cowboy Bebop, I don't think so. But yeah, look it up. Yeah, well, now I'm going to have to go look up Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, definitely check that out. It's worth it. Uh, Mike Howard, the wife and me are into Penny Dreadful right now. I I got a few seasons in, into Penny Dreadful. I don't think I finished it, though. Yeah. I like the actress that's in Penny Dreadful. Uh, Mike Howard. It's a shame that it was so short-lived. Not sure what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Marcus release 187. Did you buy your waders yet, Dan? How do you like that idea? I think to do some of this aquascaping, you have to get into the tank for sure. Yeah. Tattoo Dancer, uh, top three anime. What are the other two? Please say Full Metal Alchemist and Attack on Titan. Uh, I could get on board with Full Metal Alchemist. Um, I haven't seen every iteration of Full Metal Alchemist, but. Um, yeah, there's some really profound stuff going on in that series. Uh, I, I think that uh, we have to say anime series, right? Otherwise, like uh, like the Miyazaki stuff is going to be like one, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, like a whole bunch of like the Miyazaki stuff I liked. Oh, but as far as I, I like um, Escaflone, if you if you've seen that one, I liked a lot. Uh, that's that's a little old school. Uh, Than, would you say Cowboy Bebop is like Firefly? Yes. I would say that it is like Firefly. Firefly was slick. Um, and oh, hell yeah, Denis Villeneuve is the shiz. Yes, he is my favorite director working. Um, Dune might actually get me to go to the theater for once. I'm excited. And unfortunately, I have to wait till next year, but... Um, I saw Knives Out last night. It was good. I heard it was good. Now that that's the same director that kind of um, that kind of got smacked around a little bit for the last Star Wars movie. But I've seen other movies of his that I really liked, like Brick. If you guys have ever seen um, Brick, that's that's a cool movie. Luke, what is up? Luke wasn't feeling well, so everybody uh, wish Luke well. He um, he's got to he's got to get over some some bug. <laughs> yeah, I've heard uh, yeah I've heard good things about Knives Out. I don't know if that's the type of movie that I'd go see at a theater though. You know, it's like I I imagine it's very dialogue driven. Okay, Cowboy Bebop is on Hulu. That's cool. I don't know if you can see. So I didn't ever answer the question about like what are my favorite anime series, but yeah, Full Metal Alchemist is way up there. Escaflone is up there. Um, shoot, Cowboy Bebop might be my number one. Um, so here, you know, I'm gonna throw Robotech up there, and I'll be the first to admit that is purely driven on nostalgia. Because I bet if I went back and watched Robotech now, it is not gonna hold up. Uh, what else did I like? I like One Punch Man. What else is good? What else is a good good anime, guys? Oh, Vash the Stampede, uh, uh, Trigun. That, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Um, Gabriel, our favorite show right now, period, is Rick and Morty. Uh, so Ben, the, the guy that works here, he is hard into Rick and Morty. He's always like, you need to watch this. You need to watch this. I'm like, yeah, I probably do. That's exactly right up my alley. <laughs> People come for the corals and they stay for the for the anime chat, huh? Uh, John Rose, I'm running four AI Prime HDs on the 120. If I get some acros, do you think I should start them at the bottom, move them up, or just put them in at the top to start? Uh, you can fry acros pretty good. Even though they are a light-loving coral, you don't want to shock them. So I would probably... Uh, acclimate them slowly to light intensity because if it if it goes bad it'll go bad bad quickly 
Yeah, Ryan Johnson. Yeah, so he directed Brick, he directed Knives Out, and The Last Jedi. The much maligned Last Jedi. Yeah, Escaflone. Well, thanks for the tip. Never heard of it. Next on my list. Yeah, Escaflone is slick. I, I've been using that word a lot to describe a lot of shows, but it's very good. Uh, John, I would start them off at the bottom like usual. Oh, cool. Luke is doing, doing answering of actual <laughs> coral-related stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sarcat is asking, how come many years ago there used to be blue and white power compact bulbs or reef tanks, but you don't see those anymore? Are they obsolete? Um, no, well, okay. I'm going to answer yes and no. They are obsolete in the sense that you can't really buy them anymore. So in that sense, yeah, I wouldn't go searching. Uh, but were they good? Yeah, they were good, actually. You could grow a lot of coral. A, a lot of the stuff that you don't hear a lot about now a lot of metal halide bulbs and things of that sort they never were bad so if you had a tank that's fully lit by iwasaki bulbs 10k ushios 14k um or like the 20k radiums like those are legendary outstanding bulbs they take a lot to power they generate a lot of heat, but they will grow crazy nice coral, crazy colorful coral, really fast. And you know, they, they were never a bad light. But the hobby kind of like shifted away from that in favor of more energy efficient light, cooler lights, um, cooler running lights, I mean, uh, and lighting profiles rather than on off. So yeah, it's just like the market changed, but the technology was never bad or just didn't work. Like VHO bulbs always were good. So like VHO metal halide, the, the, the types of, of growth and coloration that you could get was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Ghost in the Shell. A lot, lot, of, lot of good stuff in Ghost in the Shell. I definitely have a, an appreciation for that series. I guess it's a series, right? There, there's several different series in there. Yeah, Ghost in the Shell had, and, and you know, the, I, I like stuff that has like kind of profound themes going on. And I, I do like in Ghost in the Shell how they look at, you know, at, at what point do you, does humanity stop and the machine begin, right? Because I think that like in, in the coming decades, we're going to see more and more of that, where there's going to be advanced artificial intelligence, and there's also going to be like, I mean, I think that, that when when I pass, I might not be fully human. I think that there's going to be this, you know, there's going to be a lot of technology in me that's keeping me alive. And, you know, I, I, I expect a lot of people, you know, are going to be cyborgs in, in one way, shape or form. I mean, you can argue that like just because of, of how tied we are to cell phones, that we have like this symbiotic relationship with technology already. It just happens to be separate from us. But if you can imagine like the advantages that technology gives you, um, imagine it, uh, like a, a brilliant, smart human being, right? And then you don't you just have that person in a box. And then you have another person, might not be that smart, but you know what that person has? He has a laptop with an internet connection and a cell phone. Like, who do you think is going to be a more productive individual, right? It's like the person that, that is this amalgam of technology and, um, and information and access to information. So anyway, going back to Ghost in the Shell, it's like there are, there are people that are almost fully machine with a little bit of human left. There's full machine and then there's people that are mostly human with slight cybernetic augmentations. And it's kind of this uh, philosophical um, balance of, you know, where does like humanity really stop kind of kind of interesting stuff uh, Marcus Aurelius Princess Mononoke was an interesting anime I agree and I, I like Miyazaki anime stories in general because they play a lot in, in the gray areas like morally gray areas and I appreciate that Uh 
Scott Morrison, survive brain surgery. Nice. As opposed to the opposite. Uh, let's see, Gabriel Berkey, the talk of the reef community right now is vibrant. Any thoughts? Um, we are testing vibrant. Um, Luke in chat had very good experience with it. And um, a lot of other people had a good experience with it. Bulk Reef Supply did like a video series on that. And so I gave it a try. And so far we're getting good results. So we're expanding the scope of our trial. But it seems to be really good stuff. Um, we need a lot of it. So at some point, if, if, I, if I wanted to continue using it, I think I might have to reach out to the company and be like, hey, do you sell things in larger quantities of these eight ounce bottles? Because I need a lot of it. Uh, Jake Lee, any advice on killing red bugs on acros? I know interceptor is effective, but the process of going through a vet for prescription sounds a bit overwhelming. Okay, so first off, um, okay, so Luke answered, you can use Bayer, true. Interceptor is not bad to get. Really what the, the vet is there for is to make sure you don't kill your cat or dog accidentally by giving them interceptor. Because I think it's like a, it's a medication for one type of pest. But if like a dog has heartworms, um, it'll kill the heartworms and cause the, the, the dog to bleed out internally. Because the heartworms are the things that's preventing the heart from leaking. So I think that is why you need a vet um, signature to get that prescription because, yeah, it's just it's for your own protection. If you just told them, hey, I need interceptor because I want to dose my saltwater aquarium to kill some pests that are on my corals, they'll be like, what? Okay, here, just <laughs> whatever you need. <clears throat> Uh, Dominic, hey Than, do you like Reefroids? Just need to have my final thing to buy them. Um, we've used it on and off. It's There's a bunch of different powdered foods that are fine. Like I think a lot of the powdered plankton foods are in general really good. Uh, we've, we sometimes feed just uh, like the frozen food and the frozen food with the powder stuff. And I think it's pretty clear that the powder stuff definitely elicits like more of a feeding behavior. So I, I wish I could tell you like which powdered food because we tend to mix a whole bunch together. Just shotgun approach it. Uh, Colin Gambetta, stupid question, but just wondering if reefing is like really hard or if there's something wrong with my tank. Because I had soft coral frags over a year and had extremely little to no growth. Well... The hobby can be challenging. Uh, so you kind of, when you go through the hobby, right, over time you kind of develop observational skills and also um, kind of like being like a doctor and going through your medical diagnoses of what might be wrong. So what could be wrong in, in a tank it could be chemical, it could be something directly harassing the coral. I mean, there, there's like a number of checklist problems that could be the issue with you. So without knowing anything about your tank, there are just some things that you can be proactive about and, and sometimes will help quite a lot. Like the easiest thing is, and I know that I'm probably preaching to the choir in some cases, I might be uh, going against some some folks that are like all about zero water change if you do a weekly water change of 10 to 20 percent of your water volume that will likely fix a ton of problems that you're running into so and again that's completely with with no knowledge of your tank at all like if you just wanted to try to be proactive that's one way to start uh, but again Developing that 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 eye for what might be wrong will let you be a lot more acute later on. But sometimes these, these kind of these holistic strategies for taking care of issues is really helpful. So part of the sorry, bang the table. One of the reasons why sometimes we don't test as much as we should is I already know what the answer is gonna be. Like, oh, we have a problem we're probably going to be doing X, Y, and Z no matter what. Like, unless it's some really obscure thing 
that we've never seen before, our remedies are pretty straightforward. It was just a matter of we've been kind of lax in doing certain things. Like maybe we should do a prophylactic dip on some things. They don't necessarily look bad, but they look suspicious. So why don't we go ahead and dip those just in case? Um, or it's spring. Things look bad because there's tons of pollen being dumped into our tanks. Why don't we just ramp up our water changes in advance of that because we're expecting it? Things like that. We um, Maybe we're overfeeding, maybe we're underfeeding. These things can get tweaked, but it is, a, it is kind of this uh, understanding of what the, the realm of possibilities really are. And after that is to do the testings just to see, but a lot of times the, the answer is a lot more straightforward. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Um, don't certain wrasses eat those? I wouldn't think that wrasses eat the, the bugs, but um, dragon face pipefish might. Uh, I will 100% tell you bear is not 100%. So or I'll stop right there. I don't know if anybody did say anything is 100%. There's no dip that is 100%. Unless you're talking about boiling bleach, nothing is 100%. But, uh, yeah. No, there's no one. There, there, there's, there's no guarantees. Like, Coral RX isn't 100%. Bayer isn't 100%. Revive, like, none of these things. But I still maintain, if you're able to avoid one pest issue, the dipping was worth it. In Sweden, they've begun having chips for credit cards and chips embedded in their skin. It's begun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Elon Musk is working on that because like the, the, the biggest hurdle to integration with, um, with technology is the fact that we went from using you know like 10 figures for the keyboard to using two thumbs like the the bandwidth to communicate is not there so he's working on some brain interface i'm sure that's going to go wonderfully gabriel I'm, i can't wait for a new robot overlords it's happening whether we like it or not it's i think i think with especially with ai coming it's it is going to be beyond our control very quickly if you guys are interested in ai uh, so Google has uh, a, co a side company under Alphabet called uh, DeepMind, and they have been doing some stuff with like um, with that. Is it Chinese game Go? It's called AlphaGo, and then they started to do stuff with StarCraft, that real-time strategy game by Blizzard. And so there's it's called AlphaStar, and they have. Uh, done really, really, really interesting stuff because the way that this AI learns is that it, it basically plays against itself and tweaks little things, plays against itself, tweaks a couple more things, plays against itself. So essentially it's played enough games to be like 200 lifetimes of StarCraft. And when like a human opponent plays against AlphaStar, AlphaStar does weird stuff that humans would never do like um like humans i guess like react uh, emotionally to stuff like oh no such and such is happening in my base and they're killing my workers and in certain cases like when when it's happening to alpha star alpha star just doesn't care just, i'm just gonna make more workers i'm just, I'm just not gonna worry about it i'm just gonna make more workers uh, and it, 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 it's, it does like just stuff that's that's not um, in, in, in the current metagame at all and somehow it like pulls out a victory and uh, I saw some like some chess things as far as um, uh, as far as artificial intelligence goes like they don't value pieces like human beings value pieces so it's like no the, the goal is to win the game the goal isn't to win the game with the best pieces still on the board so yeah it was, it was very interesting to see how like all these strategies were, were kind of different when an artificial intelligence looks at it. That was an aside. Alpha Star sounds like a pro wrestler name. 
oh, we don't get to talk. Like, okay, so um, one of uh, the guys that I've met in this hobby, he goes by Just Incredible. Like, if you ever had used Ganyu Power, it's Just Incredible's Ganyu Power. So the guy's name is Justin Grable. Um, and and the, the first time I met him, I'm, I'm sure I probably offended him. I was like, Just Incredible, like like the wrestler. <laughs> There's like a, a there's a wrestler named Just Incredible from back in the day. So there's that. Yes. So speaking of quarantine, I know I know a number of people mentioning quarantine. Uh, quarantine, really good idea. Uh, I should be getting quarantine tanks today after this live show. We get those guys set up and we can finally start our Luke Luke probably knows probably a 72 day thing right so yeah it'll be a little while before like corals and stuff like that make their way into the tanks there's currently some damsels sitting in our tanks right now um, I don't know how happy they are there's not a lot for them to to look around in but they came from 30 gallon tanks and now they're in like 250 gallon tanks um, but for a little while there, they were looking kind of not that thrilled about being in such a big tank with a lot of flow. Um, but they're acting more like fish now. And it's very cloudy. It's going through that their it's going through its uh, cycle right now. So we're we're in that bacterial cloudy bloom right now. <clears throat> Reef dudes love StarCraft II. It was a great game. Yeah, people people still into it. I. I stopped playing it like months after it came out, probably. I stopped gaming in general. It's kind of sad. I wish I could be more of a gamer, but it's just not happening. Okay, Logan J, going back up into the comments a little bit. Than, what was your first tank? Gee, I was probably like five years old. It was a 10 gallon tank with goldfish. And that was probably the last time that this sort of thing was a relaxing hobby for me. All right, Luke. Luke's got to go. Wife needs to do some homework on that computer. Talk to you guys later. I hope you feel better, Luke. Hopefully I'll see you on Monday. Get that taken a look at. Hopefully you can see a doctor soon. It's no fun being sick. Yeah, imagine going from living in a trailer to living in Buckingham Palace. Yeah, for real. Dominic Frost, Minecraft is a good game. I heard a lot of really great things about Minecraft. I've never played it, not for a mil not for like a nanosecond. Uh, hi, Than. Do you have any place you'd recommend to buy trochus nails from? So, Greg Reef Boy, um, no, I don't. So, the the problem with trochus nails is like when you need a lot of them. Uh, they don't ship well. Like whenever, whenever I've ordered them from a wholesaler, I've had really bad luck with it. Like they almost never survive. Uh, so I try to get them from hobbyists as much as possible. Dell JC is Kessel A three three sixty X enough for SPS with ninety watts? Even if I put me. Um. Okay, I'm just gonna have to piece together what that question was. Uh, Kessel A360s, they're fine. Like the, the the level of technology these days on on a relatively um, mid to high end fixture can grow anything you want. Mario, I like your soothing and intellectual voice. Thank you, Mario. I need I should take voice lessons so it can be more like a more of a radio broadcasting voice. Uh, hey, Than, any plans on a video for bare bottom cleanup crews? Um, I can save you the, the gory details. Uh, probably a human being with a, with a metal scraper blade. <laughs> but uh, if you wanted to have something more snail shaped than that, uh, we use a lot of astrea snails and trochus snails. Ideally, trochuses, but uh, they're ex more expensive. They're harder to acquire. You can get coral in Minecraft. I have seen some underwater stuff in Minecraft. That's true. 
make a fan gaming channel. Oh my gosh, I would love to, and I would also hate to. Like, here, here's what's funny, okay? I know what I look like when I'm gaming. I look like a zombie that is not having a good time. <laughs> Even when I probably am having a good time. And I would I would play like the most like boomer APM type games now. I would play like Darkest Dungeon or something. Love me some Lovecraftian horror. What's your opinion on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild? I haven't played it. I hear it's like some kind of amazing work of art. Like I wish that Nathan was here because Nathan still games because he's got like kids and you know he can kind of you know game and they can watch him and it's like it's a great little family activity but he's played through breath of the wild and he loved it um I, i've never played with it uh, i think you should start a title podcast uh, that would be cool i see here's the thing okay i have like no friends so i would need to like bring in like cool guests for for a podcast and i think that that could be cool um I, I would have to say that like half of it needs to like not be that reef related, but not delve into like some some super edgy topics. Otherwise, like my true edginess is gonna come out. They're gonna be like, ooh, yeah, that thing is kind of problematic. <laughs> you need to stay well away from that. But that's kind of the nice thing about like about having title gardens, is that it is some vanilla talking stuff. Like, like, like some, sometimes people, you know, they. Uh, you know, they, they have a lot of drama on their channel because like people get into like some really, really heated stuff. But this is like like a hobby channel. It's great. Like this is like a relatively low drama thing. After like an hour ago, I talked about banning everybody. And it's less drama after you ban everybody. So I guess there's that too. It is a self-selecting crowd with a little bit of help. Uh, with Kessel A360X, I don't reach more than 300 par ever. Um, 300 par is plenty. Plenty. You could be just fine with 300. You can do, be fine with 200. 175 is plenty of light. 300 par is a ton. Age of Empires and team and Microsoft just released their remake of number two. You know what's funny? I have played Age of Empires 2 way back in the day that's funny that's that's a long time ago what uh what video <laughs> okay so get this guys you know what i like to fall asleep to on youtube this is how this is how bad this is uh there is a video game that i've never played before called cities skyline okay and there's this british dude and all he does is he gets um so okay so imagine so cities skyline what it looks like is like advanced uh sim city okay so there's like it's like a lot more complicated looking than sim city and what he does on on his videos he has an entire channel thing after thing after thing okay is people send him their city file and he looks at their traffic patterns and fixes their congested traffic I put that on and it's just like I just go right to sleep listening to this guy talk about fixing traffic by putting in roundabouts and lane management and all this stuff. I am so exciting, you guys. Uh, Cullen, Gim Cullen Gimbetta, are you going to go bare bottom on display tanks or sand? I vote sand. I would, I would vote sand as well. However, I, I would probably have a little bit of a revolt on my hands. So my staff are hard voting for bare bottom, and they might win because at the end of the day, I want them to be happy while they take care of those tanks. Urchins are good, but they poop a lot. Urchins is a good, that's a good one. That's a good one. <clears throat> so, Stu, well, edgy than. So what's funny is I don't really do a ton of humor or anything like that. I'm a pretty funny guy, but you guys don't get to see hardly any of that because it's not like, it's not for YouTube consumption. But um, what's funny is when somebody will make a reference like in, in a comment, like, you know what? You've got, a, you've got a great sense of humor. I'm like, you have no idea what kind of sense of humor I have. Uh, Snowbunny426, I play Skyline. 
uh, Graham Bart, City Skylines is an amazing game. There you go, right? Sim City spiritual successor. Yeah, like I I know that I would like look at that and I just start to like get, just uh, get all kinds of anxiety with like traffic. Uh, how did you ever come up with the name Title Gardens for your business? Uh, it was a group of us because I used to have partners before I pushed them all out. Uh, and we just we just sat down, just like thought of different names, thought of different names, and Title Gardens is the one that won the bloodbath. <laughs> Jake Loopy, I also watched the traffic fixing videos. <laughs> it's called ASMR Than. So the ASMR thing is is hilarious, but I don't think that like I'm nearly an attractive enough 19 year old girl to be doing that. Yeah, flashbacks to the St. Patrick's Day stream. Yeah, it's like if I if I'm drinking, which is these days unbelievably rare, uh, I am I'm a much funnier human being. Is this it? 192 might be the end, guys. Might be the end. So we're going to be hitting a little bit of overtime. So, you know, now's the time. If you guys have, and, and I probably owe you guys a little bit of overtime, right, for, for the bathroom break. So uh, if you guys have any last-minute questions or anything, now is the time to not be that shy. Uh, there was a nudie or something on 186. I don't know what 186 was. It's possible. Anything is possible. 186. I'm going to look at a list. I'm not going to look at a list. We have all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, what do you think about the Triton method? Uh, many tanks for all. So, uh, the Triton method. Like, I think that it's... Uh, all these things are interesting, right? And I think there's a many ways to do this hobby very effectively so i'm not going to ever knock on somebody else's methods that are working for them okay um i personally have not tried it i don't have a good system in which to try it with um i actually spoke to the triton reps when i was in the uk at that trade show and you know they were like super nice they gave me a, a couple triton test kits we re-ran them very interesting stuff um and the guy was like is there any way that we can get you to switch to triton and i'm like no like zero percent chance and i was like the the reason why I simply can't experiment on that level is like they like they don't understand what they're really asking. If something goes wrong and stuff does go wrong when switching to try new things, these things happen. Okay, if something goes wrong, I lose a million dollars. So like I, I've got like a good relationship um, with. You know the guys at Fritz. I've got a good relationship with like a few different you know salt manufacturers, and and like the guys at Triton were very very nice. And it's like guys, I can't like unless my current salt brand supplier has like some catastrophic change and everything goes bad and I need to switch. Um, unless something like that happens, I can't just switch to to your product bright well whatever it is okay it can't it cannot happen because for you guys it is just oh we'll just we'll, we'll sell him some volume discount salt great for me it's like uh, if something goes bad it'll be such a catastrophic disaster that I simply cannot take that risk to satiate any kind of curiosity like it's a huge hurdle. So unfortunately, to answer your question, Del, um, no, I have not really messed with Triton. <clears throat> Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yes, that does look good. I played that to death, the original Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, any experience with bacterial blooms dealing with a particularly slimy one right now? No, not too much. I mean, technically right now there's a bacterial bloom going on in the downstairs tank that we're cycling currently. Um, UV goes a long way. It's old school, but it's not that expensive. You can, you can crank through that pretty quickly. There should be a video game that's like Reef Tycoon, a sim based where you build tanks and grow corals and breed fish and stuff and basically make your own virtual title gardens. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much fun that is really in practice. <laughs> Experiment my livelihood, sure. You know what? That's funny. What's funny, Diacanthus Reef, is I've done this before. Like, I tried Aquaforest. Like, Aquaforest works great in Will's tank. I tried it mine, did not go great. I'm like, okay, we can't do this ever again. So, sorry, this, this ain't happening. Um, Glenn Martin, ideas on flatworms. The way that, um, that we deal with flatworms is mainly by populating our tanks with wrasses and damsels. Uh, if you wanted to do it chemically, there's like flatworm exit and stuff like that that you can try, levamisol, that type of thing. I don't know if you can do levamisol anymore. Is that like completely banned yet? It's like a commercial pig deworming product, but I think it, it got like banned because people were cutting cocaine with it or something. I was, I was, I was about to say a very edgy joke, but I'm gonna I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it for like for private for private sessions <laughs> but anyway uh did you watch the video game awards uh, or watch the game awards i'm assuming video game awards i have not I, i'm out of the loop when it comes to video games like um i hear death stranding is good but no i, I I'm, I'm out of the loop uh, Cullen, I'm super excited to see the display tanks get started. So the plumber was supposed to be here today. He said he was going to be here. I guess he, he might have gotten hung up. Because, get get this, guys. So he is being called in to work. Okay, so uh, may, I think this may be in the last live show. I might have brought this up. But there is the Tidal Gardens of, uh, of car washes. That's about like a couple minutes from my house here. They do like a subscription service. It's like about 40 bucks. And it's all like they, they scan your car when you drive in. And you don't have to talk to anybody. You just roll right in when it's your turn. And this thing is like the baddest auto car wash thing ever. And you might be thinking, I don't like those because uh, they put paint swirls in my car. As you, as you drive in, okay, there is this camera array that takes pictures of, of every single car that goes in. And there's a camera array as you come out. So if anybody ever has a complaint, because they, they claim that there's zero chance that you get paint swirls because of their process or their, the quality of whatever they're doing, right? Um, there's zero chance of them putting paint swirls in your car. So they can show you here's where you came in here's where you came out those paint swirls that you saw coming out were there on your car before you went in sort of thing anyway it is a super hyper advanced awesome car wash and they have these blowers at the very end to dry your car off that um each one costs over a hundred grand and i think that there's like a dozen of them and they just blow every molecule of water off of your car pretty cool but there was a screw up between the engineer and the original plumber. And they were having like water pressure issues. And so like, because my plumber was there to do like the radiant floor heating and stuff like that, like he was clearly like a step above everybody else. It's, it's pretty obvious when like, when you meet this guy and then you see his work, it's like, yeah, that plumber's not like all the others. So anyway, they're like, uh, we need to fix this issue because this is all designed wrong. This is all all wrong. And so, yeah, they just like brought him in and he's like doing all kinds of more work for them now to kind of like salvage like the screw ups that the original plumber and the engineer designed in. So he might be called off doing, doing that right now. <clears throat> but yes, I am excited to get this stuff up and running too. 
and and they've been they've been here um, doing a lot of work recently, so I'm not complaining. <laughs> hey, Tidal Guard, do you have a new idea for a seatbelt that might work? Can you test it for us? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Yep. <laughs> Colin says, no, please say the joke. I need it. No, you don't. <laughs> no one needs to hear it. Uh, Glenn Martin, what's going on with the Indonesia export? Uh, I don't know. I hear rumors that it's going to open back up. Until it, until it actually opens back up, it's closed. That's how I'm looking at it. Angry Owl Aquariums, what is up? What is up? How is everything in Houston? Um, you need to buffer the water if you use... Leva? Um, I'm assuming Levamisol, maybe? It will make your pH go very low. Yeah, I don't know. So our, our, our well, yeah, I, I would say that for home aquariums, watch out for pH. Like in, in our systems out here, we never have pH issues just because it's an open air building. So like it always e equilibrates to 8.3. 8.3? Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, any minute now, I'm expecting... Um, this delivery of my quarantine tanks so i will have to go soon but it's been it's been fun hopefully you guys enjoyed the live show uh hopefully got your all your questions answered about movies about shows about anime about car washes anything not particularly reef related that we do here so yeah anyway um it is almost time for me to go so i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend uh if you guys are into the nfl hopefully your team does well tomorrow the browns are mega drama so no matter what i i'll i'll watch i'll watch they they got my attention so anyways i will call it then uh see you all next time <laughs>